Hello and welcome back to The Note. The big news we were all anticipating today came from the Federal Reserve. They had their much anticipated meeting for June on monetary policy. And I think it's fair to say that the reaction on markets was about as quiet as it could ever be on a day when the FOMC makes an announcement. Very little movement in stocks or bonds, a slight weakening in the dollar. Generally, very, very calm. Now, that is even though we saw, I think, quite a surprise. The Fed was very dovish indeed, in my opinion. That came both from the uh, uh, initial statement, the very opening of their statement now downgraded their assessment of the uh, labour market. No surprise after the very disappointing numbers for last month, but that's only one month and it's a noisy series. The Fed could have been firmer on that. If you look at the dot plot, as it's called, where the uh, uh, expectations for future interest rates of different uh, Federal Reserve governors are recorded, many more of them now think that there will be only one rate rise this year. And there were no dissents at all. Uh, there had previously been one dissent to the notion that rates should stay the same and not rise. There was no particular attempt to keep open the possibility of a rate rise at their next meeting next month in July. Now, that all seems quite surprising to me, but as you can see from this first chart, it wasn't particularly surprising to the bond market. We had seen a remarkable rally in 10-year Treasury bonds, bringing the yield ever lower. You can see it's its lowest in some three years, apart from a few hours during the mayhem in February. That was a very strong and I thought rather risky bet that the Fed would be dovish, that it would cave in on further rate rises, and that bet has come off. If you want a, a notion of the kind of risks that people are prepared to put on a continuing dovish Fed, look at this chart. This is derived, this next chart, this is derived from the Fed Funds futures market as analyzed by Bloomberg, and it shows you the percentage probability that the Fed funds rate will be exactly the same at the end of this year as it is now. You can see again, apart from that panic in February, we are now seeing as strong a possibility as we've ever have that there will be no rate rises this year. That is still a long way ahead of the Fed where virtually all the governors are still expecting at least one and many are expecting two rate rises. So the market is doubling down on its bet that the Fed is stuck in dovish mode. It's worked this time. It may yet fail to work for the markets in future. Meanwhile, the, the reaction on the stock market wasn't particularly great because ultimately the market was betting on a dovish Fed. If we take a look at what that has meant for US stocks compared to the rest of the world in this final chart, you can see that it really is still a question of USA Uber Alles. It's quite remarkable how the uh, US stock market has outperformed the rest of the world very, very consistently since the, uh, at the time apparently traumatic development that uh, Standard & Poor's downgraded uh, US sovereign debt back in 2011. The current approach where we continue to have better growth than most of the rest of the developed world and the Fed, despite threats, doesn't move too aggressively raise rates is at least continuing this remarkable dominance of US stocks.